In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can link data like an object from one Blender file to another Blender file so that when you edit the object or data in the first Blender file, then it will update in the second Blender file. And this works for many things like objects, materials, node groups, collections, and other Blender data. And some reasons why this might be useful is because you could have one master Blender file with one object or collection, and then you can link it to other Blender files, and then when you just edit the single object, then it will update for all the other files. It also helps to avoid accidentally editing the object that you're linking. And it's just a great way to keep large projects very organized. So I have this simple scene here, I just have a few objects, and then I'm going to open up another Blender file and add a cube. So here's another Blender file that I have, and so I have this red cube here. So you can see here in my file browser, I have the scenes Blender file, and then I have the objects Blender file, which has the cube. So I'm going to open back up my scenes file. So I want to link the cube from the objects file to the scenes file. So what I'm going to do is click on file and then you can use the append button just to append it in, but that's not actually going to link the same data. It's just going to make a copy and stick it into the file. So what I'm going to do is click on link instead. So then in my file browser, I'm going to go to the objects file and then I'm going to go into object and then I'm just going to select the cube and I will click on link. So now you can see that this cube is linked from the other file. But if I try to like edit the cube, like if I try to go into edit mode by hitting tab, you can see I can't go into edit mode. If I like go to the materials, everything's grayed out, so I'm not able to edit the materials. And I also can't move the object or scale it or rotate it, and that's because it's linked to the other file. However, I'm just going to jump back to my other objects file, and I have these other example objects which I'll be using in a moment later in the video, but here is my cube, so let's just say I want to edit the cube, so I can go into edit mode, I'm just going to select some faces and I'll inset the faces, and then I'll extrude them and maybe like scale them in like that, and one more thing, I'll just add a new material, I will assign the new material, and I'll just make it a blue color. So I'm just going to save the file by just hitting Control S, and then I'll close the project. So then in order to see the updated object, I just need to save and close this file and open it again. And when I open up the new file, you can see now the changes have been applied. But if I like try to go into edit mode or edit the object, I can't edit it in this file. I need to go back to the original file to edit the object. Now also if I open up the outliner and just open up this collection here, you can see this object here, this cube, it has a little chain icon. And so that's Blender telling us that the object is linked. So that is useful to know. Now this linking feature can also be used for things like materials and collections and other data. So here's my ultimate procedural material pack. And what I'm going to do is type in camo and I'm going to add this desert camo material, drop it here. And then I'm just going to save the file and then close it. I'm now going to open up this scene here. And what I'm going to do is add the desert camo to this object. So I'll just click on file and I will click on link. And then here in Blender's file browser, I'll go to objects. So this is the objects Blender file. I'm going to go to the material folder instead. So not the object, but I'm going to go to the material folder and then I'm going to choose the desert camo. So now if I just click on the sphere here, click on the drop down, I'm going to add the desert camo. And you can see I can't edit the material because again, it is linked. And also if I click here on the material drop down, you can see there is an L next to the material and that's Blender telling us that the material is linked. So again, I can't edit the material, so what I need to do is just save this file and close it. I need to open back up the objects file here, and then I can edit the material. So maybe I'll make it like a green camo, all right? So I'm going to hit Control S to save, and then I'll close this project, and then I'll open back up this scene project. And now you can clearly see that it's updated. It also works for collections of objects, so I have this collection here, and I have it in a collection called Triangles. So I'll just save this file and close it. Let's open up the scene project, and I'll click on File, and then Link. And again, back in the file browser, I'll go here to the objects blender file. This time I can go into collection instead and choose the triangles and link it. Now with the collection, you can actually see if I rotate it or move it around or scale it, it's actually going to update. So you can see when it's linked here, the icon is a bit different. And then you can also see it has that chain icon. But if I try to like go into edit mode or like go to the materials or anything, I actually can't go to the materials and I can't edit the object because it's linked, but I can move the collection around. Now let's say for some reason I wasn't very well organized or I moved my Blender file. So I'm just going to take the objects file, this is the original file with the assets, and I'm going to drop it here into another folder, or let's say I delete it or move it somewhere else on my computer. Well if I now open up the scene here, you can see it is gone. So the cube is gone, and you can also see that the desert camo material is gone, and so that's because I moved the project and so now Blender doesn't know where the data is. So if you are working on projects like this and you're linking different files, I'd recommend just making sure you organize everything 
everything really well. And then once you start to link the files, don't move the Blender files around. Because if you do move a Blender file around or delete it or something, Blender won't know where the data is. Now maybe you're working on a project, but you want to break the link so that this is now just its own object. So to do that, you just want to select the object and then you want to click on object. You want to go down here to relations and then make local. So if you want all of the linked data and objects in the entire file to be unlinked at once, you can choose all or for just one object, you can choose the selected objects, data and materials or just selected objects if you don't want the materials to be affected. So now this is just like it's as if it's its own object in the file. So I can go into edit mode, I can edit the file. I can also delete the materials or whatever I wanna do. Now when it comes to materials, if you wanna unlink a material so that it's its own material in this project, what you can do is select the object with the material. You can see it's grayed out right now. And if I click here, you can see it has the L for linked. But what I can do is just click on this little button here, the chain icon, and now it is a separate material. And so now I could like change the colors if I wanted to. So that's how you can link data in Blender. So I hope you found the tutorial helpful and thank you for watching. And before I end this video, I wanted to let you know about my Light Gobo Asset Pack. So it's an asset pack, which I just recently posted, and it has 150 Light Gobo assets, and they're all pre-set up for Blender's asset browser. Now, Light Gobos are a great way to add realistic shadow patterns to your 3D scenes. So for example, things like light shining through a window or sunlight shining through different things like nature and trees and plants and leaves. If you wanna learn more about the asset pack, then I'll have the product trailer video in the description and also the product pages linked in the video description. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching.